two German botanists named uh, Matthias Schleiden and Theodor Schwann in 1841. But it's only a theory. It has not been absolutely proven. And yet the medical students in our University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences are being victimized by being taught only the cell theory and not alternatives. Shut up. <laughs> You'll find references in these books, in our, in our textbooks and our, our library books, to the germ theory of disease concocted by Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. This is the unproved notion that microscopic bacteria, which you can't actually see with your unaided eye, can make you sick. And it's labeled as such in the textbooks and in the reference books that we deal with. It is only a theory, it is not proven, that opening unmarked envelopes sent to you and breathing in white powder that you find is actually bad for you. We cannot offer scientific proof of this. If Dr. Hovind were to offer $250,000 for proof of the germ theory, he'd be able to hang on to his money for a very long time. There's also the heliocentric theory, going back to the 1600s, uh, the theory of Copernicus. It's the unproved notion that the Earth goes around the sun and that it spins while it's doing so. And it's not only unproved, it's unbiblical. Uh, Dr. Hovind, um, you mentioned earlier that the Earth was spinning over 1,000 miles per hour at the equator, if I uh, wrote that down correctly. Uh, there is a verse in the Psalms, I believe it's Psalm 91, that says, the Earth also is established, therefore it shall not be moved. Uh, clearly you were calling King David a liar. And your tax dollars are being used to defend this preposterous notion that the Earth actually goes around the sun and that it's round. There is actually a group of biblical flat earthers based out of Lancaster, California, with some very interesting information on the web. And this is not being presented in our astronomy classes. There's more. There is this unproved notion called electromagnetic theory that is being taught as if it were fact to our engineers and our physicists and our electronics technicians that supposedly explains electricity and magnetism. But it's only a theory. I did some reading in engineering textbooks. It penetrated even there. You will find references in these textbooks to plasticity theory. This is only a theory. It is not proved that metals bend in a particular way when you put weight on them. And finally, the atomic theory, the utterly unproved notion, which a number of prominent physicists like the German Ernst Mach have disagreed with, that everything is made up of some sort of invisible atoms that you can't actually see. Our architects and our engineers are being victimized by only being taught one version, by not being allowed to, by being forced to use plasticity theory, by being forced to use this mechanical, unproven notion uh, when they design bridges and buildings uh, for the very picky reason that the bridges and buildings would fall down if they didn't. That's not good enough reason. We need to expose them to a wide range. Just an example, a so-called educational website on disease clearly mentions the germ theory of disease. Not proven, not fact, merely a theory. Yet our medical schools indoctrinate thousands of doctors each year with the unproven notion that little living things crawling around in the air can make you ill. Germ theory, germ theory. A common biology textbook, Life, the Science of Biology, calls this the fourth organizing concept in all of biology, but it's only a theory. It's the cell theory, the notion that organisms are composed of cells and that the cell is therefore the basic building block of life. We need to present a wider range of alternatives. A very common astronomy textbook, the heliocentric theory, the idea Copernicus came up with, the new theory was supported at the outset by no convincing proof. And if they have proved it, why are they still referring to it as the heliocentric theory? I would really like to know. Common physical, physics reference. We got this out of their library. It's a whole book called Theoretical Physics. Not practical physics, not the sort of thing people would use. It talks about the theory of the electromagnetic field, this unproven notion of a bunch of numbers and symbols and equations uh, that I couldn't understand that allegedly explain what's going on in my computer right now. Why are we teaching them only this? Theory of relativity I don't even want to go into. Common engineering textbook, we find again, 
the theory of plasticity, dislocation theory. There's a close-up if you couldn't see the original, the theory of initial and continued yielding. All of these ways for building solid bridges and solid buildings are being presented as if they were fact, but it's clear from the textbooks that I have seen in the library that, they're being, uh, that they, what they really are is unproven speculation. They are religions. We are indoctrinating our doctors with the religion that bacteria creep around in the air. So, Dr. Hovind, I think I fundamentally agree with you about the impact that evolution has had on society, but it has its tentacles in areas much farther than just biology. Our society is being eroded at the core from the widespread acceptance of unproven theories in everything from building design, bridge design, aircraft design, uh, to physics and to chemistry. And I say, I agree, we should tear all of these pages out and remove all of these books from our libraries and do nothing whatsoever but teach facts. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I, don't, I can't remember the name of the fallacy for what you just committed for the logical thinking, but you're trying to include evolution with these other things. As it, to try to make it appear that they're the same. I'll have to go back and look up the name of the fallacy in the, in the logical process. Um, but we observe cells. To say the cell theory, I mean, you can see them under the microscope. I've seen them and worked on them many thousands of times. You can see the effects of the electromagnetic theory. You can see the results. I would like to see what results we have from the evolution theory. What advancements to modern science do we have? What good has this done? And I think I could point out, if we had time, scores of examples where the textbooks do not refer to it as the evolution theory. They refer to it as the fact of evolution. And they'll say statements like, you know, all species of life have a common ancestor. That has not been observed. It's not even said that this is a theory that all species of life have a common ancestor. So you're trying to include evolution with these other sciences as if they're on equal footing when they're certainly not at all. Uh, let me give you some examples of what this theory has done for our, our world. Um, evolution is the foundation philosophy behind racism. There are many, many folks who would agree with this, including Stephen Gould. Dar there's Darwin's book, The Origin of Species, which is, by the way, not the entire title to the book. Um, this, these are considered different species of monkeys, yet they're obviously the same kind of animal. Okay, they're still a monkey. Here's a little more to the title. In a book entitled On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection... Well, now, wait a minute. There's more to the title than that. Here's the whole title of Darwin's book. But the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Darwin was quite a racist. This is well known. All you got to do is read any of his books. He thought natives were advanced animals. He thought the way we get higher animals, notice the phrase higher animals, in other words, uh, one's lower than the other, okay, from Darwin's book. Of course, in 1859, racism was prevalent in, in America, certainly, and still a lot of slavery in the world today. Uh, but uh, slavery was common. Henry Fairfield Osborne, who testified at the uh, Scopes Monkey Trial, 1925, Dayton, Tennessee, he was the uh, curator at the American Museum of Natural History. He said, the standard of intelligence of the average adult Negro is similar to that of the 11-year-old youth of the species Homo sapien. He was quite the racist. Stephen Gould at Harvard University said, biological arguments for racism may have been common before 1850, but they increased by orders of magnitude following the acceptance of the evolutionary theory. So I think this theory we're teaching the kids certainly is a just, pseudo-scientific justification for racism. Thomas Huxley, the man who really promoted Darwin, said, no rational man cognizant of the facts believes the average Negro is the equal, still less the superior, of the white man. Uh, King uh, Priestley, King Charles uh, Priestley, Charles Kingley, there it is, was the Anglican priest who said this, uh, the black people of Australia, exactly the same race as the African Negro, cannot take in the gospel. Poor boots in human shape, they must perish off the face of the earth. Kingsley is the fellow who really promoted Darwin and got people to accept him. Kingsley and Huxley were the two primary pushers and movers and shakers for Darwin's theory when it came out. Uh, the Mormons, of course, have swallowed this, and they think the Negroes are inferior. We could talk a long time about that if we had time. Um, so I, I would point out that uh, the evolutionary theory was used as justification for killing the uh, Australian and the uh, Tasmanian Aborigines. They were using the skulls of these people as displays in museums and in classrooms because their jaws are thicker. People used to go to Australia and kill the Aborigines just to get their skulls for displays. 
The jaws are thicker because they use their jaws more. And any bodybuilder will tell you, the more you use your muscles, the bigger the bones grow. It's a much slower process, but it does happen, OK? Aborigines have a nomadic way of life. They don't want to carry a toolbox with them. So they make their tools on the spot. And they're always using their jaws like a vice. But what happened to the Aborigines in Tasmania and Australia, you will not be able to understand what happened and why it happened until you see how evolution tied in. These two folks used to go collect skulls for museums. This article says, uh, the new South Wales missionary was the horrified witness to the slaughter by mounted police of a do group of dozens of Aboriginal men, women, and children. 45 heads were then boiled down and the best 10 skulls packed off for overseas. The Smithsonian today has 33,000 sets of human remains in their basement as evidence for evolution. And I think part of this is from the theory that it's destructive. There was 1904, St. Louis uh, held the World's Fair. 2,000 primitive people were put on display to demonstrate the superiority that a white Americans had evolved farther. Anthropologist McGee designed the display. Peter Jennings told about it here in his book, Century for Young People, of ABC, by ABC Peter Jennings. Oda Bengo was taken away from his wife and two kids and put in a cage with chimpanzees to demonstrate the, how the, he was an African pygmy. The guy went insane and killed himself. That was part of a demonstration for evolution. See the website rae.org if you want more on that. Theodore Roosevelt believed in evolution. He thought the Indians were an inferior species. Roosevelt said, I wish the wrong people could be prevented entirely from breeding. He thought the many immigrants from Europe, Scotland, Ireland, and the Orient were a threat to American society. I don't think you'll understand what happened to the Indians until you understand the theory of evolution, how it was prevalent during the 1800s. The Trail of Tears, which took place before Darwin's book came out, but evolution was popular before Darwin's book came out. Those people came right across this part of Arkansas. One third of the Cherokees died on the way. Um, Sam Houston was enraged by what happened to them. He quit Congress over it. Um, you won't understand the uh, Trail of Tears incident until you understand they thought they were an inferior species. Yet the Bible says we all are of one race. Evolution is also certainly the foundation for communism. Communism is based on evolution theory 100%. Uh, the founder of the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, said communism is the goal. Karl Marx, the founder of communism, wrote a beautiful paper of how much he loved the Lord when he was 17, but he went off to college and a professor destroyed his faith in first year in college. Karl Marx uh, was one of many whose faith has been destroyed in one year of college from Christian homes. 75% of the kids from Christian homes who go to secular schools will lose their faith after one year in college. Marx later said, my objective in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. Professor uh, Wilson at Harvard University said, as were many persons from Alabama, I was a born-again Christian. When I was 15, I entered the Southern Baptist Church with great fervor and interest in the fundamentalist religion. I left at 17 when I got to the University of Alabama and heard about evolution theory. Uh, we could go all day on this one, uh, this topic. Let's see. Evolution is not only the foundation for racism and communism. Adolf Hitler and Mussolini were strong believers in evolution. This is what motivated them to do what they did. Hitler thought the Germans were the superior race. Uh, Sir Arthur Keith wrote the foreword to Darwin's book when it was republished in 1959, the 100-year anniversary edition. He said, the German Fuhrer has consistently sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution. Um, a direct line runs from Darwin to the father of eugenics movement, Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, to the extermination camps of Nazi Europe. Here's Hitler's book, Mein Kampf. It's full of his racist philosophy, where he talked about higher and lower races. What motivated Adolf Hitler to do what he did was this theory that there is a higher and a lower race. Hitler thought the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Norwegians were close to pure Aryan. They were the superior race. The Germans were second. They were mostly Aryan. Mediterraneans are slightly Aryan. Slavic, half Aryan, half ape. Oriental, slight ape. Black African, mostly a 